welcome to Enots Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video we'll be checking the bearing ply in the headstock and showing how to adjust the bearing ply and we'll also have a look at the back gear on the headstock and how it works. So let's go into the workshop. First of all we'll remove the chuck, always put a board on the bed so that if you do drop the chuck at least it's not going to damage the bed. Here's the locking pin, select the locking pin, move it around so the mark comes up to the top. I use the chuck key but it's possible if it's tight you might break your chuck key. You can always use something uh, in the chuck jaws or across the chuck jaws, it shouldn't be that tight. Obviously some chucks have a locking nut at the back that you undo and the chuck's on a taper. This is a screw chuck. So what I'll do is I'll take this cover off here just to show the bearing should be behind this cover and at the same time I'll clean it out. There are three cap heads that hold the cover on. You see there is no grease seal as such. Well, we'll just see three grooves and the idea is if the grease gets into there it slowly moves along and the spindle keeps it in position. I just want to clean the face. Make sure there's no swarf or anything on this face to get into the... I did wipe it down before I took the cover off. Let's see if I can show you the bearings. You can see the bearing there. See if I can turn that. So you have one bearing on this side and the other bearing is at the back of the headstock. I've just dropped this on the floor and my luck it landed with the grease down so this was covered in swarf and bits so I've had to clean it down. I'll put this back on. Let's tighten these screws up. It doesn't need to be too tight. This is a grease nipple. If you put too much grease in there, it'll come out of here and also come out inside. I'll take the cover off, take the four screws out. This will usually get oil on the inside. Now you can see the main drive belt. This is obviously the back gear. I'll undo this. That's, that's engaged into back gear. And this gear here is in line with that one. And on this side, you see the gears here. As I move the lever, this gear comes forward and engages. As you disconnect it and put in back gear, this one, there's four pins on here that come out of this part. This shaft moves with the two gears on. So the drive belt now drives this gear at the back through this gear, that gear, back onto that gear to drive the head and when you're not in back gear the drive belt drives this which drives this gear and turns the chuck. You can see down here grease that's come out the back of the second bearing and this just fills up with grease so I've just taken off. So you don't need a lot of grease because when you grease the bearings the excess grease will come out on the inside here and fill this gear. Gets on your belt and your belt starts to slip. So eventually this will get full of grease and it just throws it round in here. This label tells you when you're using back gear oil daily. And what you do is you put your oil can through there and it goes into this oil nipple there and puts oil inside of this. Now if you put too much oil in it just throws it all over the place. So it does say when using back gear. So I don't oil that unless I'm using the back gear. On the rear of the lathe in the where the gearbox is you've got the these three cap heads hold an aluminium plate in which covers the bearing. This is a screw thread here and this is how you adjust your bearings. This part here is a nut 
To do it properly you need a C spanner with the pins in that will fit in this these holes. I'll turn it round. You'll also see holes all the way around but there are also two grub screws. You need to slacken these grub screws off before you try to move the nut. Let's check if the bearing needs adjusting. Right, I've cleaned the spindle out and just put this Morse taper in. I'll put a dial indicator in the tool holder. So what I'm doing is just pulling on the end of this bar to see what play I've got in there. It's about a thou. If you move your dial indicator out to this end, the play will be more. And if you move your dial indicator down towards the headstock, you'll see that the reading is reduced. So by using a test piece like this, you're actually magnifying the reading. This is the true reading on the end here, which is about a tenth. Now I'm happy with that because it's not giving me any problems. So to adjust the end play, slacken off the grub screws that are on the outside of this nut. If you're lucky, you can use the Allen key once you've slackened the grub screw off to turn the nut. But if it's really tight, you'd need to get a C-spanner to put into this hole and turn the nut with a C-spanner. You don't need to tighten it tight, as what you're doing is crushing your bearings together. Slacken the grub screws off. Turn the nut a fraction, and then go back and check your play on the dial indicator. Once you've reduced, tighten the grub screw back up again. Put a bit of grease in before you start it up. Now I adjusted this six months ago. It's still less than a tenth on the end there. Let me try and explain how the bearings work. This is the chuck side, this is the screw thread for the chuck. Here you've got the diameter that your chuck locates on, on the, off the back plate. That continues down. This is a roller bearing. This is the bearing shell. And this is recessed into the casting of the headstock. So it goes in this way and the back of the casting comes at the back of it so it won't go any further. On the other end, the other bearing, goes the opposite way. The recess is this way, the shell is at the back, and the bearing goes in here. Then the nut that you adjust is on the back of that. So as you tighten this nut up, it compresses the bearings between the, the headstock. Because this bearing can't go that way because of the larger diameter the only way it can go is, is this way. This bearing can't come out because the nut's on the back so as you tighten that nut up it compresses two bearings together into the housings or into the bearing shells and reduces the end play. Especially when you've got end play the distance between the two shells is too big and the, the bearings are doing that. As you compress the bearings, it tightens up. If you over adjust it, obviously you're then going to put more wear on the bearings, more pressure, which will produce more heat. So you have to get this back play just right. And it's better to be on the loose side than on the over tightened side. Just hold the bar, pull it in and out. As you can see, that's putting quite a bit of force on that. That's it for today. I hope that was useful. And if you enjoyed it, why not subscribe? And we'll see you next time on Enox Engineering.